Oof, Zubat. Zubat, Zubat, Zubat. I might go for a Geodude while I'm here. Would not be a bad idea. You'll have much less trouble with Surge if you can manage it. Let's go Zubat. Yeah, I... If I can catch any... Like, ground type or rock type, I'll be fine. Very true. I do not want to zoom out. That's a bell sprout down. That's what's up. <laughs> Are you actually fighting her? I am merely doing the trainers around her at this moment. Okay. Um, trying to make sure that I. What kind of levels I. Uh, I would need to take her on. It's looking like I'll be pretty good. Um, most of my stuff's around 28, and uh, the stuff for this trainer that I just fought is around 23, 24. Um, my biggest problem is going to be that I don't really have a hard counter for grass right now. Obviously, War Turtle's water, um, so water actually becomes, or choosing the water starter. Um, actually ends up being something of a hindrance in this generation because yep, I mean, you do you do pretty well with the first two gems with just your starter and then you run into a hard wall with Surge and Erica. Yeah. And Surge is a huge wall. <laughs> yeah. You get you get hit by anything in that gem and you're dead. Yeah, and it's much the same with uh, with the grass gem. Um it, it is admittedly a little bit tougher with Surge, though, because you're at the point where you're... If you're just using one Pokemon, you're at the point where you're not... Where you're not quite strong enough to take on just about anything with whatever type of Pokemon you're using. So... It's a little bit of a conundrum, because if you're, if you're doing a single Pokemon run... It's around right about after the third gym leader where you get to the point where you can one hit KO anything, um, even Pokemon that aren't necessarily the uh, a type that you're strong against. So that's an interesting piece of trivia. <laughs> By the way, uh, I looked into uh, the Pokemon trades after faints mm -hmm. you know you can trade out your pokemon after a faint right and uh an actual like in the professional uh, yeah i say professional loosely but in the professional uh fighting like pokemon fighting they don't use those trades oh yeah so I, i'm thinking that it's an intentional design that you don't get to uh trade out after you fight or after you kill somebody. Yeah, um, I actually realized this myself uh, because I was doing this thing in black and white called Battle Subway, which um, mm -hmm. is basically yeah. a simulation of the competitive Pokemon scene or whatever in uh, black and white and then in black and white too. Um, and when you are doing the battle subway stuff you can't trade out your pokemon after you've gotten a kill um which makes sense uh it means that in terms of having competitive pokemon battles the other player can set up for whatever you've put on the field and you have to spend a turn basically correcting that not necessarily a mistake but correcting what uh what Pokemon you have on the field, so it, it lends a pretty distinct advantage to the other trainer, um, which is, I think, if not a better design, certainly a more interesting one than uh, what they have in the as your regular rule set for Pokemon. I agree. Another thing is that uh, when you're fighting another player, you don't get to know what they're about to throw out. Uh, for example, when you're fighting a trainer, it says, Hey, this person's about to throw out this. Would you like to switch Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah, and, I forgot about you know, that. You get to choose the Pokemon you switch to, but when you're fighting PvP, 
you don't you they don't know what uh, they don't know what Pokemon you're gonna throw out next, so nobody can tell you. So there's actually no reason to switch. Mm, very true. I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate this place, Mount Moon. It is the worst. <laughs> it's like you walk two steps, and there's Zubat or Geo, dude. Yep. Oh man. You know, I was thinking about catching a Geo, dude, but it's only level nine. I don't think. Well. Just keep in mind, just keep in mind that um, even if you catch one and you don't use it, you're just out of Pokeball. Um, it would be, it'd probably be fairly helpful for you and Surge, but on the other hand, I don't think it'd be necessary since you're using Charmander instead. Yeah, instead I'll catch it anyway, which I did. There we go. Good call. Um, he'll probably just end up in my box though, because I, I think there's a place closer to Surge that has higher level Pokemon, uh, ground type, or rock type, I think. Oh, yeah, the, um, Diglett Cave. Yeah, yeah, I can just grab a Doug Trio. Because I, they spawn, don't Doug Trios spawn down there? I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, they, they might, I really don't remember seeing them when I was on the way over, but I was kind of hesitant to go in there anyway. The spawn rate seems pretty high. Very high. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing we talked about last time that I looked up. Uh, this game does not have resets on the uh, random encounter. Uh, in counter. <laughs> so like, if you if you're in a fight with a Pokemon, it doesn't say okay, you get ten steps until we start up the random generator again to see if you run into a Pokemon. It's the random generator's always going. First step you take. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, so in theory, you could walk in this cave, and every single step you take, hit a Pokemon. The chances are astronomically low, but it's possible because they don't have the reset on it. Yes, and uh, that's another reason that beta is beta. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's not, it's it's just a slight annoyance. It's not something that's game-breaking, so... Agreed. There's no reason to change it right now. Alright. Even the Team Rocket trainers have Zubats. Yep. I've always found that to be curious. I wonder why Team Rocket is supposed to be this, like, huge villainous conglomerate or whatever. Picks Zubats of all the Pokemon. Yeah, in, in, in terms of the anime, uh, why would they want Pikachu so bad? I I never understood why Pikachu was such a target for them. Mm. Especially just Ash's Pikachu. I mean, I guess you have to have a storyline, but I guess I if you're but if you're the huge clunk conglomerate, couldn't you just buy a Pikachu? I think that. At least for the three that always followed Ash, uh, Jesse, James, and Meowth, I feel like the reason that they always wanted Ash's Pikachu was because it seemed so much more powerful to them than any other Pikachu. That's true. That's true. Which, I mean, you know, as we saw in uh, Gold and Silver, sorry for spoilers for those of you who haven't actually played those games, but um, you fight Red, who is basically Ash. They're they're pretty synonymous. Mm -hmm. He um, uses the same Pokemon. Yeah, he uses the Pokemon that Ash had about that time in the anime, um, or about the time Gold and Silver came out in the anime. And uh, one of the Pokemon that he uses is a Pikachu that's pretty overpowered. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think it's the strongest trainer Pokemon in the game, being at about level 80, 81. Um, and, it, you know, it's a Pikachu. I, like, not even a Raichu. Yeah, it's... I, well, 
in the games, don't you have to have a thunderstone, something like that? Yes, and in, in the game, she used the thunderstone to evolve a Pikachu, yeah. um, or and you use friendship to evolve a Pichu to Pikachu. Uh, I don't think I ever played it. Oh no, I did. Uh, it was long. I have played a game of Pichu. In it. I was when did say, Pichu get added? Uh, gold and silver. Okay. Yep. His, uh, I he's, remember having one and hating it. <laughs> he's one of what they call... Well, I, I don't know what the technical term is for it. Um, but it's basically a useless Pokemon um, that they use to kind of capitalize on Pikachu being as popular as he is. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these other, some of the other useless Pokemon that fall into that category are like Meryl, um, who you know is okay in terms of what it is, but it's not the best Pokemon in the world, and obviously yeah. it's very similar to Pikachu. And again, Magikarp. <laughs> Everybody loves Magikarp, man. I mean, it, it's about the use, most useless of the useless, I'd say. It could splash. <laughs> there's, a, there's a GIF online. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Or it's not, it's not a GIF, it's actually a Flash animation. And uh, it's two trainers fighting Magikarps. Oh, Magikarp it, it, it's an It's an infinite Flash. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, I think I do remember seeing that now that you mentioned it. I'll have to show you that afterwards. Uh, Splat. But the thing the thing about all those Pokemon is that they evolve into something amazing if you can get them there. Uh, like Pikachu, for example, really strong. Not in this version, actually. I I was looking up some stats. Mm -hmm. And Pikachu's actually, its defense is super weak in this game. Yeah, I, th I think that that might have been one of the uh, hazards of having a Pikachu in the original gens. Um, I really don't remember because at that point I I wasn't really super concerned with the uh, how powerful stuff was, but yeah. Um, I don't remember ever having the Pikachu and being like, well, this Pikachu's the best thing ever. Yep. Yep, I never... I've never said those words in my life. <laughs> I... I was a Pokemon Yellow owner, and I hated that thing. <laughs> I, the thing I didn't like about Pokemon Yellow was that you could not evolve Pikachu into a Raichu. Yeah, which Which made no sense to me. Um, well, despite the fact that they, they almost even hinted at it, like, there were a lot of, like, rumors that if you got Pikachu to, like, level 100 and used a Thunderstone on it, it would finally evolve, or, you know, a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff like that, but obviously none of them were true, and he was just a big, big hope killer. Well, the, another thing was... He had a mood, which was, I think, probably the first time they had the moods of Pokemon in the game. And he would get upset if you put him in Bill's PC, in his Pokeball. He'd just get upset, and he had to be following you. So it was like a slot of your Pokemon, or a slot of your party, was always filled up with, by that dumb Pikachu. I hated him. <laughs> That's when I started using Pidgey as my main. That's why I still do. Yeah, I myself started uh, in red, and I think that I played yellow. I actually never got a chance to go through and finish um, gold and silver, but uh, I really played hard during Ruby and Sapphire. It was the first gen that I finished the Pokedex in. But, um... And then I've also played, I played a lot of Diamond and Pearl, and then I played Platinum when it came out, and um, I've played a little bit, i played a good bit of Black and White, I guess, at this point, point. Um, and I just recently got 
black and white too. Um, and I ha so recently I haven't started on it yet, but I'm looking forward to that. So that's a little bit of my history with Pokemon. My my Pokemon history goes. I played Yellow back when Red and Blue and Yellow came out. Uh, then I played Gold. I, I told the story about me finding a silver in the pocket of a rental van. Ah, uh, yes. And then, uh, so I played that. And then I took a long break because I didn't have the correct system uh, for the next gen. Which I... What was the correct system for the next gen? Uh, that would be GBA. Um, no, so I did have a Game Boy Advance. I don't know why I didn't play the next... I guess this gen. Fire Red and Leaf Green. Yep. Uh, I have no idea. Maybe it was money thing. I was very young at that point in time. But, uh... So I never got into anything after that. Until very recently, I, uh... Have a an emulator on my phone for Game Boy Advance and DS, so I've been going back and playing through all of those. Yeah, I, um, I don't think there was ever a time where I was like, oh, Pokemon, not playing that today, but, <laughs> um, I don't know. In particular, with uh, in particular, I got pretty into it with Ruby and uh, Sapphire, and uh, I also played a lot of Emerald. So, you know, I I have not played Ruby or Sapphire yet. It's one of those that I need to go back and play. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, I feel that they are uh, very well made. Uh, at the time, I really didn't have too much access to the internet, so that also kind of uh, fostered my interest in it. Um, since I didn't have really a way to... I guess I'm going to have to use Eevee. Uh, since I didn't really have a way to... <laughs> oh, yes. Since I didn't really have a way to look up stuff for the generation, I was really inter into um, trying to catch all of the Pokemon at the time. Um, and there were also a number of things like, I believe it was in... Uh, Well, there, were, there was a city in Ruby and Sapphire that was home to a space station. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it was um, Moss Deep. Um, and in that city, there was a, a door which was blocked by boxes. And when you went and looked at the boxes um, and you, you hit A on them to like like you were looking for an item or whatever um it would tell you that there was a breeze wafting through the door but it wouldn't say anything else um and so for the longest time i had a couple of friends who a couple of friends and myself who were trying to figure out what what this was about what this uh what these doors could lead to and so uh i don't know if it was just a rumor or a happenstance, but we decided that, well, the only obvious thing was that behind the store there was another Pokemon. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we set out, my friend and I uh, in high school set out to complete the Pokedex because we determined that this would be the only way you could possibly get whatever Pokemon was behind these doors. Um, and so we spent... spent uh, about 200 hours in the game uh, completing the Pokedex. Wow. And when we finished the Pokedex, we got a certificate. <laughs> that made it all worth it. Very true. 
<laughs> the um, so you actually finished one hundred percent. Yep, it was all three hundred and uh twenty something that were in the the ruby sapphire gen Pokedex. Wow, that's really impressive. Um, well, that, that makes well first if you think so. <laughs> Pokemon game then just gave you a certificate. Yeah, um, but uh, we came to find out, or at least I did, uh, a number of years later, that uh, in fact those doors led to a a room that you could uh, use if you had e-reader cards, which there was a device for the uh, for uh, the Game Boy Advance that was an e-reader. So it was a gimmick. It was, and it wasn't. Um, from what I understand, it could have been cool, but it wasn't cool. But even so, uh, it was cool to, at the time, uh, try to be trying to figure out what uh, what was behind these doors, you know? You're like, yeah. oh, it's got to be an event Pokemon or something, but nope. <laughs> well, it wasn't. <laughs> Man. But that was the good times back in the day when you didn't ha when you didn't have to look or when you couldn't look everything up. Ex I guess. Exactly. Um, I, but you know, to this day, I could say that I completed a Pokedex, and it was a Pokedex, and there were greater than two hundred and. 50 Pokemon in it. Yeah, that's really impressive. So I am at the end of Mount Moon. Uh, the This trainer says, Hey, stop. I found these fossils. They're both mine. And we go into a gym battle. Um, for those of you who have been paying attention to the screen, you'll know that I am completely out of PP for my Ember attack. So that's not good. Uh, my Pokemon is also looking a little bad. <laughs> I'm at 16 HP, and if he dies, I don't have anything else that could fight in this place. So this could be a wipe. It could be a wipe, yeah. Well, hopefully not. For those of you who are wondering what's happening with me, um, I just beat Erica, actually. Um, nice. It was a very close battle. Literally every one of my Pokemon is dead but Clefairy. And Clefairy has uh, a total of 34 HP left after me using a Hyper Potion on her during the battle. So it was quite a lucky break. Because I, Erica used like five or six different powder moves on me and none of them hit me. You're just dodging left and right. It's great. Oh man, this is gonna be a wipe, I think. I'm getting worried. This Grimer has missed every single attack, though, so. That's positive. Uh, oh, yes! <laughs> he missed his poison. Nice. I have 3 HP. Oh my! But I still have two Pokemon to go, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a wipe, unfortunately. Uh, that's just the way it is. Well, do you have any potions? No, I've used it all. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Yep, and... The Voltorb, so I don't... I don't really stand much of a chance. Because all of my attacks are not very effective against it. Fair enough. Alright. Psych Eric. I think... It's just giving me hope now. Those <laughs> jerks. <laughs> the Voltorb did nothing but charge. <laughs> wow. Oh, now there's a coughing though. I'm dead. <laughs> there's no way I can survive this. Uh, Give me a critical. No! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> this is so scary. Yes! Keep messing, please! 
Come on. No! Oh, man. <laughs> Darn. That close, huh? Well, I mean, let's see. Let's see if I can get anything done here. Um, let's see if we can just tackle. Okay. Yes, okay. I got it. Nice. I didn't realize Clefairy was going to be so helpful. She's pretty OP. Whew! Yes! That was about the luckiest fight I've ever been on. Now just don't run into any wild Pokemon on the way out. For real. Oh my gosh. Don't even say that. <laughs> okay, so I get two choices between these stones. Um, I think I'm going to pick the right one. It's either the Helix Fossil or the Dome Fossil. I'm thinking I'm going to go Helix. Now, as uh, I can tell you what those uh -huh. two Pokemon are, if you would like to know. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, Ammonite is the Helix Fossil, and he is, he's like a, kind of like a shrimp. Um, and then, uh, the Dome Fossil is Kabuto, who evolves into Kabutops. Right, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, an Ammonite evolves into Omstar. Omastar. So, those are basically your two choices, there. Okay. And I am out of Mount Moon. Woo!